This video is sponsored by Blue Land. How often do you think a coffee goes down on a coffee table? Why don't we just call it something different, you know? What does a tea table look like? What does a milk table look like? Food for thought. DIY friends, welcome back to my channel. We are back in the living room after two weeks of living room revamps. We started with the console table in the back, this lovely new modern piece. Uh, then we went antique shopping to add in some new decor, which was beautiful. But now, after I've given my body a little rest, I am ready to build a custom coffee table that not only serves coffee, but it serves comfort and aesthetic to make this hopefully one of the coolest coffee tables I've ever built. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I do think this could be a smashing success. <laughs> Can't confirm, but I am choosing to move into this project with unshakable confidence. So we better get this video going before that confidence shakes. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. <laughs> it's shaking. <laughs> oh All righty, let me just set my two drinks down here. Okay, let's talk about the coffee table, shall we? I gotta say, I'm just thrilled with the way this entire space is starting to come together. You know, that every furniture piece, every decor element has been picked and placed with thought. And it really feels like it's made an impact on how this room feels. Now, what doesn't feel good is this current coffee table situation. <laughs> So I mentioned during my console episode that I recently switched out my L-shaped couch for this very similar looking non-L-shaped one. We love it, it sits high, it provides great back support. When I had the L couch, a round coffee table like this really worked well, but now that we have this one, um, this guy just really isn't cutting it. My husband Jeff likes to sit here, I usually sit back here, and we like to put our feet up, and usually one person can put their feet up on this, and the other person will like maybe get this like side sliver if they can reach it um, and it's just it's just not working for us now obviously I could buy a new solution but what kind of fun would that be I thought this would be a great opportunity to make something totally custom and kind of work with the modern organic antique aesthetic we got going on in here so I asked my husband what he wanted most out of a coffee table and he said well a comfy place to put his feet up on <laughs> so my first thought was Ottoman style make the entire coffee table cushy but then I thought well we do like to eat dinner in here sometimes and we use the coffee table to serve food so a good solid top would be ideal for that I know you can put you know a hard top on top of an ottoman or have like a cushy side with a table in the middle but I don't really love those looks and I really love this live edge table I really feel like it feeds into that organic vibe that I love so much in here I'm sad to see it go but it really just doesn't work in here I'm thinking I can probably put this up in my studio space though and it's gonna be a great little coffee table for up there so don't worry little guy you're gonna have a better home soon so with that I wanted to find a way to combine live edge with an ottoman just to make these elements like one super saiyan fusion dance one entity piece uh, and uh, that's when I came up with this so I'm going to DIY an ottoman slash coffee table combo by building the main table shape as a comfy, long upholstered ottoman. To solve the table aspect, along with ensuring a more organic vibe is evident, I'm gonna find a live edge slab of wood, waterfall the corners, and have it nest on top of the ottoman. It can live independently from the ottoman, live off to the side of it, or just in the middle, but with the two pieces together, it serves dual purpose of comfort and function in this living room. Eh? Eh? <laughs> I better get going on that. But in the meantime, while I'm doing all that, I figured this is a great time to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Blue Land. I'm happy to say this is my second time working with Blue Land this year, a company who has been helping me achieve my personal goals to reduce my single use plastic footprint in my home. Blue Land's mission is simple and is aligned with my goals. Make it easy to be eco with products and reusable packaging that are convenient, effective, and affordable. Since January, I've integrated a bunch of Blue Land's reusable cleaning products and I love using them with their compostable earth-friendly package tablets. I also use their dishwasher starter kit which comes with this tin to hold my dishwasher detergent tablets. And now I've incorporated their laundry tablets which has said to be proven to lift the toughest stains and I can confirm that statement from someone who really gives laundry products a run for their money on a daily basis. 
All Blue Land products are planet friendly and uses no single use plastic in any component from bottles, tablets, and wrappers to shipping. Their tablet packaging is fully compostable, and the best part, you can save money and buy refills in bulk or set up a subscription, which can be customized so that you never run out of your most used products. They also have a bunch of other cleaning products available, so go check it out. Blue Land is sharing a special offer just for you. All you have to do is click the link in my description box that looks like this, or use the QR code on screen here to get 15% off your first kit. All right, my kitchen's clean, my laundry's done, and uh, I think we can start this DIY. I got something really exciting to show you. Are you ready? If any of you watched my Q&A video, somebody asked me what kind of tools would I love to have in my tool arsenal in the future. And I mentioned that I really wanted a Festool plunge saw with the track. My mom happened to be watching. And next thing I know, look what's showing up on my front doorstep. I'm just like, let's go DIY something. Let's cut something. Let's cut everything on this plunge saw. Thank you, mom, if you're watching, which I know you are, so <laughs> thank you. Yes, I'm getting new fancy tools like this, but I just want everyone to know that you don't need all these fancy tools to do DIY projects. If this channel has proven to anyone that you really can build with anything, um, because for the most part, I've been building things with just a good old chop saw, a circular saw, Saw, a drill and a jigsaw, so that's all you need. But then eventually you get to points where you can level up and start using big tools like this and it makes me so happy. Look at this thing. It's just crazy. She's so pretty. I'm just really excited about it. Okay, let me show you guys the materials I got. This is a cool piece of wood. I had never heard of this species of wood before, so this is gonna be a cool and fun build. Let me show you. Okay, so check out this beautiful live edge slab. I got this from a local wood, like lumber yard. Um, this guy kiln dries everything himself. He's like a one man show and I just love supporting him. So when he showed me this board, I was like, that's perfect. So the wood species is called Catulpa. You know, it's probably very well known. It's just something I've never heard of it. And I just thought that was cool. So, you know, you learn something new every day. I don't get the sense that this is like a crazy hardwood, nothing like working with maple or oak, but the, it's just so nice. And when he showed this to me it's the per it was a perfect width the thickness wasn't too bad it's an inch and three quarters it was already planed which means I don't have to do any of the planing we just got to sand this bad boy but it does have you know a few little characteristics here uh, depending on where I do end up needing to cut it uh, I probably will have to fill in some spots with epoxy but other than that I mean she is stunning she's still got the birch on or the bark on the sides that I do need to take off but like I think this is gonna be stunning I also have a four by eight sheet of plywood. This is just, you know, builder grade plywood. And I got this four by four post. I just wanna get going on building all the, the pieces for the box. I wanna use my new plunge saw. So let's go cut some of the pieces we need for the box. And then we'll call it a day. And then tomorrow we are going to assemble and then start doing our upholstery. So I'm excited. Let's go cut some pieces of wood with our new plunge saw. <laughs> <laughs> Get my hose, we get to plug her in. You got the moves, I'll give you that. my build plan for the ottoman box. I wanted this to be super lightweight but have lots of stability because it is a furniture piece that could serve many functions beyond a piece you put your feet on. So I'm cutting six pieces of plywood to be my top, front, sides, and top support that's gonna secure the top to the base. Then using my four x four, this is going to act as the posts that sit inside at each corner of my box. These posts add ample rigidity and provide me a place to add my furniture feet to later. 
Okay guys, check this out. I ended up putting this box like pseudo together. It's not actually together right now. It's literally being held by tape. Uh, but I wanted to show you what kind of what the goal was. So we're gonna have our two inside pieces, our two outside pieces. These are sandwiched in between. Uh, we have our four four by four posts that are gonna sit on the inside to give it a little extra support. And then in between the four by four posts, there's actually a piece down here that's running like basically as the spine. So this thing is flipped upside down now the piece the spine is here for structure but also it's going to be the way that I secure the cushion top to the base because it's being built in two pieces so it's just giving me a way to secure this to the top from underneath and then we have our top this is obviously the, the bottom but our top will eventually then sit on top and then there's gonna be a tufted piece on this but uh, I'm gonna get all these pieces together take everything inside and then I think we can just start assembling this thing inside all the upholstery can happen inside so no more spending time in the cold garage. <laughs> yes. Good morning, friends. <laughs> I built a box. <gasps> oh, did my legs just get here? Hold on. Friends, my legs have arrived. <laughs> I'm so happy. So I ordered legs off Amazon and they just arrived right now. What are the odds? Ta -da! Ta -da -da -da! Look at these cute little things. And it's nice because they come on a square plate, which is perfect because the base that we have to attach it to is square. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're winning with shapes today. It's hip to be a square. Hip, so hip to be. It's hip to be a square. Okay, so check this out. This is the material we're gonna put on top. I don't really know what material this is. Like, I, I, I wanna say velvet, but I don't think that that's right. And I'm not really a fabric specialist to know what kind of fabric is right in front of us. Oh, darling, that's chartreuse. <laughs> The best part about this fabric is that I just ended up calling a local upholstery company and asked them if they had any leftover um, material from all of their upholstery projects and they said yes. So I was able to go in and just get what I needed um, and they gave me the rest of the roll for a, a very big discount. So I really highly recommend doing some research and like calling upholstery companies and asking them if they have leftover bits because I got this for so cheap and it would have cost me a fortune if I'd gone into a fabric store. Check out Facebook Marketplace too because there's a lot of people that are always selling their scraps off so I just feel like it's a good tip if you're looking for fabric you don't need to buy that much um, and you have a very specific color in mind. Make some calls see if what they have and uh, sometimes it pays off because they had this and it was so beautiful so I got really lucky. I wouldn't say that I am a pro upholsterer. I try. I really do try though. <laughs> okay, let's go to bolster, but I'm afraid. <laughs> totally wrong we can't say that don't say that to people <laughs> unless it's a furniture piece to which then you can say it has nice legs Ooh, micro bangs are not for you <laughs> We have a fuzzy sheep. Now let's add that coat, shall we? Ooh. <laughs> All right, friends, we got our top. 
top. So I have a two inch foam here. We got our three quarter inch plywood as the lid. I decided to go for a foam that was very firm. You know, if you're putting your feet up on it, I, it, I think this is gonna be good enough, but I kind of was like, well, what happens if someone, you know, does put maybe a drink down on the ottoman? You want it to be nice and like firm so that the drink doesn't get uh, thrown off or if you put a tray down that it stays stable. So I went with a very firm foam, a firm foam. <laughs> Why does that sound weird? Foam. 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 Easy peasy lemon squeezy, let's go make it top. Foam. Web. I'm not giving myself pro upholstery title here. <laughs> Just to be clear. Yeah, what's up? Now, here's what needs to happen. I have to take this guy and then I'm gonna fold it in half. I really don't need that much, oh my God. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Okay, so then I'm gonna put it right on the edge and just, it basically is just gonna give my pillow a little seam. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I made this. Hey, you know what? She ain't so bad. I'm not really thrilled about the corners, but you know, that's just my inexperience with upholstery. But you know, all things said, I don't think it's that bad. I do like this little element here, like this little piece here. I think that's kind of a neat little um, trick and it kind of cleans it up a little bit. I'm pretty stoked about it. But uh, tomorrow we start on the live edge piece. So let's just get to tomorrow. See you then. <laughs> All right, friends, I'm officially in the shop. I got my piece of wood here. As I mentioned, this is a catalpa wood. It is a hardwood. Now, typically it can have either a grayish look or like a honey brown look. Obviously we're gonna move towards the honey brown look for us in this project. Luckily, it's already been planed up. It's all an inch and three quarters across the board. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was funny, but anyway. Let's get going. Let's prep this board so uh, we can finally see this project start to take shape. And I'm excited, so let's get going! Camera high five! <laughs> All right, voice over Denny popping in here. When it comes to Live Edge projects, there is no right or wrong way to do it. Some people prefer to leave the bark on it, but it wasn't the look I was going for. So to remove this, I actually do a first pass with a chisel and a hammer. The bark usually comes off pretty easy and anything else I can use my disc sander with an 80 grit wheel to help remove the rest of the debris. This is a pretty messy process, but I was happy with the end result. Still need a bit more sanding, but I wasn't gonna get fussy until the end. 
Now, I feel like I've become a bit of a broken record when it comes to sanding, but working through your sandpaper grits is very important to ensure your board, which I'm sure you spent a lot of good money on, is left with the best finish possible. If you're using an orbital sander like me, you need to let that sander do the work. You only need to lightly hold it just to guide the direction because as soon as you add pressure, that's when those squigglies are left on your board. My first pass was just about removing the general router lines, which you can easily tell where I had sanded and where I hadn't. My second pass, I took a pencil and drew a line all the way down my board. I didn't press hard, but this allows me to see where I've sanded just to ensure I get good coverage across the board. I basically just keep sanding until those lines have disappeared and then I move on to my next grit. I did this every time I worked through my grit, starting from an 80, then 100, 120, 150, and then I finished with a 180. Well, another project with hours of sanding involved. I would say I started sanding around 11 and it's now two o'clock. I am gonna have to sand again after because there's a good chance I'm probably gonna have to epoxy some parts. So this will need another good sand, but we got most of the base layer done. This board is absolutely beautiful though. I mean, look at the wood grain. It's just so stunning. And once we get a finish on this, this is just gonna shine. I absolutely love it. It's so beautiful. Now we get to do the fun part, which is cutting this up. So I really want to highlight this grain pattern Pattern. And to do that, I'm gonna waterfall it, which means we need to cut it at a 45 degree angle. The hard part here is that I need to cut the first piece at a 45 and then the piece that sits in the middle, I'm gonna have to flip it over and then cut it another piece off of that. It's gonna let that grain just naturally go down and give it that beautiful waterfall effect. So I'm hoping that this works out. I really don't wanna screw it up, but I'm also like cross fingers and hope for the best. Yeah. Friends, I don't think I've ever been more in love with the tool like I am with this plunge saw. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Now, my live edge piece didn't have a reliable square edge to measure from. So my first task was to cut the end and provide myself with a square starting point. My plunge saw has the ability to cut angles, which is amazing because in order for me to waterfall the edge, I needed the cuts at 45 degrees, but cutting at an angle, my saw can't cut through the entire board, which meant my saw left about a quarter inch of space left over to be cut. So I ran my saw through on one side, flipped over the board and ran the saw back through the same cut point to finish it off. Perhaps this was the longer way to do it, but it did ensure my angles were cut with some level of precision. <laughs> Oh yeah! Yeah! Yes, 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 yes! I was clearly pretty happy about my first cut and now I just simply flip my board over and make a second cut in the opposite direction to remove what looks like a triangle shape from my middle piece to allow the two pieces to fit together with the wood grain matching. This is what's going to give it that waterfall effect. Oh my gosh, I can't get over how scary that was. All right, let's do it two more times and not screw up again. <laughs> oh. Okay. Friends, you have no idea how good that feels. Wow. I mean, it's not perfect, I know that. You know what, if there are some mistakes on this, then say la vie. At least I tried and I went in with a fearless attitude and gave her a go. Next time you just, well, you learn from your mistakes and then you just continue to get better. So all things said though, I actually don't think that this is gonna be looking that bad. <laughs> But uh, as we know, these pieces obviously have some icky sides to it. Um, you know, we got some edges. So I say, let's take these pieces into the studio and let's go do some epoxy. <laughs> All right, who's ready to epoxy? Yeah. 
So what I have here is my epoxy. It's a part A, part B, uh, one to one. I also have some Tyvek tape, thank you garage. I also have my mask for when we do start to epoxy and I didn't want to go with the clear. I just thought it wouldn't look as nice, but what I did have was this chestnut brown uh, pigment that's gonna go in it. This actually has a little bit of a sparkle to it, but honestly, I think it's probably not gonna read very sparkly, so I think we're gonna be okay. I love playing with epoxy. Time to tape this bad boy. All I can do now is just wait and uh, we'll see what we're working with tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow, friends. So let's talk about the epoxy. Uh, it went good, no problems, but it did end up leaking in one teeny tiny spot, but you know what, it's fine. I was able to contain it and once it dried, I could do a second pour on top for any of that depth that I lost. It's A-OK. -okay. The boards look pretty good today. I'm happy with it. I think we can basically just start sanding this down, making it look nice and flat. I don't think I'm gonna need to plane the epoxy off. I think I should be okay with sanding because I didn't make it that thick on top, uh, but we are about to find out. <laughs> However, you know, I was saying yesterday how it's pretty, like it's not that sparkly. I don't know guys, I think it looks pretty sparkly to me. I really didn't think the sparkles were gonna be that evident, but uh, I guess we just have a sparkly piece. <laughs> like my personality. <laughs> is I think this waterfall technique is gonna work out perfectly. I don't think the epoxy turned out half bad. Now I need to put this piece together. To do that, uh, I was kind of thinking like, how am I gonna get these the waterfall to stick together? And I'm pretty sure that most people would either dowel or use like a biscuit joiner. I think what I'm gonna do, because I'm not gonna be using a biscuit joiner or doweling, I think I'm gonna create a jig. And basically the jig's gonna look like two L's that are facing each other, and then I'm going going to attach the two legs to each of the back sides of the L's and then kind of squeeze the whole thing together, glue it up, um, and then I'm just going to add some really simple little L brackets on the inside just to connect the pieces and really just let the glue and the L brackets do the work. Is it ideal to have those L brackets on the inside of this piece? No, but you know what? I, I don't know. I'm not a pro woodworker. I'm fine with it. <laughs> You're never going to see it anyways because it's on the inside. So. I think the important thing is that the outside looks flawless and it has that beautiful waterfall. So I think I'm gonna use my scrap plywood here. I'm gonna cut some boards up, screw them together, get my jig going, and then we can start putting this thing together. All right, let's go do it.
Okay. She flustered, <laughs> but I think we made it. This is the first time I've ever done this. So I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but I tried my best. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna clean up and then uh, we'll see what it looks like after. Okay. Well, here it is, friends, my Ottoman slash Live Edge coffee table mashup. I was honestly a little worried it might feel a bit bulky in this space, but I absolutely love it. And that green pop of color, it not only complemented the tones in my living room, but it really contrasted so well with the warm Live Edge wood. It, it's just breathtaking. And that grain pattern, oh, it just looks like you're walking the sand dunes of Tatooine, or maybe more relevant to say the dunes of Arrakis. <laughs> Oh no, so beautiful either way. I was thinking it maybe it would have been nice to add storage in this ottoman, but honestly, after talking to Jeff, we both agreed that we probably would never use it. Storage was not an issue in this living room anymore. So I think I'm happy with the decisions I've made on this project. And I just, I think it looks awesome. Well, DIY friends, there we have it. I made my own custom ottoman meets coffee table combination. <laughs> I honestly think this looks awesome. I love it. It's it turned out to be the perfect height, the perfect size. I am so thrilled that the shape of this and the size of this just literally wrapped around this ottoman exactly like I hoped. And I think the waterfall looks awesome. But of course, you guys should let me know what did you think of this project? I hope it inspired you to create something for your own living room. And I gotta say, this whole space is really coming together. I really love how cohesive everything feels like I've been saying, and um, I'm just thrilled. I gotta say, Kenobi is a big fan of this ottoman. <laughs> I wonder how he's gonna feel with the wood attached to it, but all that said, I think uh, I think this is a really successful project. And of course, a big thank you again to the sponsor of today's episode, Baloo Land. A reminder to use the link in my description box to get 15% off your first kit. And of course, a big thank you to my Patreon family. As always, thank you for your ongoing support. And if you guys are looking for a place, an awesome community of people to hang out with, talk DIY, talk nerdy. We even got a book section. We talk nerdy fantasy books. Come join us on my Patreon. Get on the Discord and join the chats. It is the best place to be. But of course, my friends, as always, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Yeehaw. <laughs> I shouldn't be wearing this hat. <laughs> it does weird things to me. <laughs>